I'm not going to lie. Quadratic sequences are tough, but they're only tough because there's so many steps involved. If you know how to do each step, the math is actually really straightforward. So let me break it down for you, and then you've got to practice it, all right? Because repetition is key here. That's how we concrete this stuff in our mind. So first of all, let's see what the difference between all these values is. 5 to 11, well, we go up by 6 there. 11 to 19, we go up by 8. 19 to 29, 10. And 29 to 41, well, that's going to be 12. All these differences are different. So that's how we know it's not linear. A linear sequence is where they all got by the same amount. So here, with this quadratic sequence, we've got to find the double difference, the second difference, which is 2, 2, and 2. Okay, those are the same. That's good news. So it seems a bit weird at this stage. However, what we have to remember is this double difference, we've got to half it, and that is going to be the value in front of the n squared. So half of 2, obviously, is 1. So we know the beginning of our answer is definitely going to be 1n squared, or for our purposes, just n squared. So that is going to be the beginning of our answer. The next step, we're going to write out the sequence of n squared, because that tells us what we have right now. So n squared is 1, because 1 squared is 1, 4, because 2 squared is 4, 9, it's essentially just all the square numbers, 16, and it goes on. Now, this next step is one that people tend to forget or get wrong. Now, try and remember it like this. We do the original sequence minus this sequence. That's it. Very simple maths, really. So 5, take away 1, is 4. 11, take away 4, is 7. 19, take away 9, is 10. 29, take away 16, is 13. And we only need 4, we don't need to go on for too much longer. Now here, what we have is a linear sequence, a regular nth term sequence, which we should know how to do. So all we've got to do is just find the nth term of this. So we find the difference between all of these, which is going to be 3. So that means we're going to have 3n. And what will be the term before this number? Well, if they're going up by 3, the term before would be 3 less. So it would be a plus 1. So then our final answer is going to be n squared plus 3n plus 1. Right there. All right, let's go for another one because repetition is key here. So, like with all sequences, let's find the difference between the terms. So there we've got 8, 12, 16, and 20. All different differences. So let's find the second difference between those, those, and those. 4, 4. Four. Okay, so our double difference is the same. We know it's a quadratic. What's the rule here? That's right. We're going to half this number, and that's going to be the value of our n squared. So we are going to have 2n squared. That is definitely going to be the beginning of our answer. So our next step is we write out the sequence of 2n squared to see what we have right now. So the first term is going to be when n is 1. So that means 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So remember, we do the squared first, then times it by 2 because of bid mass or bod mass or ped mass or whatever you want to call it. The next term, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. We'll do one more. 4 squared is 16 plus 2. I just did that one. Uh, 4 squared. No, I didn't. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. So remember, the next step here Original minus what we have right now. 2 minus 2 is 0. 10 minus 8 is 2. 22 minus 18 is 4. 38 minus 32 is 6. And now we've got a regular linear sequence, which should be nice and easy. So let's find the difference here. These are all going up by 2, and that's a positive 2. So that's going to give us 2n. And what will be the term before there if we had one? Well, it would be a minus 2, wouldn't it? Because they're all going up by 2. So that is minus 2. So then when we stick that all together, let me grab my red pen here. Where the fuck is my red pen? Right, we're going to go for blue, because red has disappeared. And we just put the final answer together, which is going to be 2n squared plus 2n minus 2. That's it. And then obviously, 
what we can do to check, which I think is a really good idea, is plug in one for n, just to check we get the right answer. One squared is one times two is two, plus two is four, take away two is two. So we know we've got the first answer. So that gives us an almost certainty that uh, we are on the right lines here and we've got the right answer. So to determine whether 136 is a term in this sequence, we need to make this sequence equal to 136 and see if there is a value for n for which it exists. So let's write that out. n squared plus n plus 4 equals 136. As we should be able to tell here, this is a quadratic, uh, this is in quadratic form. So we're going to try and solve it by factorizing quadratics. It's usually the most efficient way of doing it. You could use the formula or a lot of your calculators nowadays, you can just type the shit in and it just tells you. But we're going to do it longhand here with, the, with factorizing. So the way we do that is we make it equal to zero. So let's minus 136 to this side. We should get n squared plus n minus 132 equals zero. Now, when we're factorizing this quadratic, um, we basically want to try and find two numbers. Well, let me write out the brackets first. n and n to make the n squared. Two numbers that times together to make 132 and add or subtract to make one. Now, there are various different ways of doing this, but this is my preferred method. Now, number that times together to make 132, 11 and 12. Can they add or subtract to make one? Yeah, so those are going to be our numbers, 11 and 12. Now, what combination of 11 and 12 makes positive 1? Well, that's going to be minus 11 plus 12 equals 0. Now, to find the actual value of n, for this bracket times this bracket to equal 0, one of these brackets surely must equal 0, because anything times 0 equals 0. So if this bracket equals 0, that means n must equal 11, because 11 minus 11 is 0. Or, if this bracket equals 0, that means n equals minus 12, because minus 12 plus 12 equals 0. So, we've got two values. n is 11 and n is minus 12. Well, remember we've got a sequence here, and these are terms in a sequence. So, that one can't be right, because we can't have the minus 12th um, term in the sequence. But this one does make sense. So, we know that the 11th term... Gives us 136. So if this wasn't a whole number, if this wasn't an integer, then that would mean no, it's not a term. But because we have an integer here, that means that this is the 11th term of this sequence. So it's all good. All right, all right, finding the 10th term of this sequence just requires some relatively simple algebraic substitution. So when we're dealing with the nth term, and then they ask us for the 10th term, what we're literally saying is replacing n with 10, nth term, 10th term. So here, we're going to also replace n with 10. So this is going to be 2, 10 squared. Always substitute stuff in brackets. It makes it a lot easier. You're less likely to make mistakes. 4, 10, minus 1. Now let's expand these. So uh, obviously the indice, the power, comes before the multiplication. So 10 squared is 100 times 2 is 200 plus 40 minus 1, 239 is the 10th term of that. So remember, it's just a case of plugging that number into n. 10th term, nth term, there you go.